What was your first impression of Huff? Well, first was, well, my, actually inter my actual interview with him was pretty amazing because um, this was like the heyday of bad boys. So in 1997, just to put it in context, I think of the 52 weeks, bad boy, a bad boy or a Sean Combs produced song had the number one record for like 30 out of 52 weeks. So it, he was just hot as ever. On fire. Of, of course, coming off uh, the death of Notorious B.I.G. in 97, 98 was, you know, just everything was platinum. So, you know, he was super busy. So we do the interview. Um, we're at a hotel room. I'm at like kind of a uh, kind of a dining room, kitchen table type of thing. And he's looking at my resume and he asked me a question. I forgot what it was. And then the phone rang and he picked up the phone and started talking, right? So I stopped. I was like, okay, he's not listening. So I'm gonna stop. He's like, no, keep, keep going, right? So, <laughs> so I'm like talking and I'm like, there's no way he's hearing me, right? And then he gets off the phone and he repeats back like three things I said. So I was like, oh, this guy is the king of multitaskers. I could see that right off the bat. Uh, but no, I mean, I think um, I you know, had already been following him, right? And I knew uh, his success. Um, and so I was already a fan in a lot of ways. Um, and everything I saw about him just confirmed what I, what I believed, that he was a great entrepreneur, that he had great instincts, uh, that he was a great uh, you know, businessman, and just really a rare, one-of-a-kind type of human being. You are older than him by a couple of years, correct? Yes. At what point did you realize in, in the world of entrepreneurship, you know, you can hit it out the park once and never do it again, or you can work your whole life and at the end of your life, you finally hit it out the park. This guy has had consecutive, like he, at one time he's batting a thousand. At what time did, at what point in, the, in your experience with him did you realize this is not an accident? This is not, you know, just someone who is randomly th throwing things at the wall hoping that they'll stick. This is somebody who's special. Yeah. <clears throat> there are a lot of genius decisions he made. Uh, one of them was his decision to get into apparel. Uh, when I joined Bad Boy in 1998, uh, that was the beginning of the decline in sales of the record business. That was, as we talked about, that was when new technologies were entering into the picture. Digital music was entering into the picture. And you know, literally starting in 99 and 2000, you just saw sales starting to go like this. So uh, had he not made the move to decide to get into uh, the apparel business, um, overall his empire would have, would have suffered. Uh, going from making significant profits in music, um, as that started declining, apparel really picked it right up. So not only was there uh, an experience that most people don't have, which is as you said, most people are fortunate to see one business go from an idea to hundreds of people to hundreds of millions of dollars in sales, you know, see that one time. You know, you know from our experience, we saw that like four times. Right, literally, like you know, just ideas scratched. Um, when I first joined Bad Boy, Jeff Tweedy was just scratching designs, mm -hmm. showing John designs, you know, at his desk, and he was mad because he was sitting in the cubicle. And I knew Jeff from before, and Jeff was like, "Yeah, you just wait. When we launch this brand, I'm getting the biggest office. You guys got me sitting in the cubicle." And he was mad because he would get his samples, hats, and T-shirts. And this is when he said, "I knew I had a brand." because he didn't have an office, so he'd put them at his desk, and they were all gone by the next day, because people were taking them. So, uh, so anyway, that was like literally seeing that go from an idea to a real business. But what the apparel business did for him, which others didn't have, is that as that record uh, profitability was going down, he was, he was running a, an extremely profitable apparel business, and really a one-of-a-kind type of launch of that business. So that launch, I mean, there was definitely a time where I, it was hard to fathom anything he did not being successful. Like it just was kind of like you didn't even factor it in like you would in a normal business because everything he was touching was, was gold. Yeah, pe many people don't realize, you know, at that time, this, and it was a really special time to be on the front lines of seeing business after business, like you said, go from concept 
to hundreds of employees and hundreds of millions of dollars. It, it, you know, but I love that you said Jeff Tweedy, and for anybody who doesn't know who Jeff Tweedy is, he's the president of Sean John. Most companies start the same. He was literally, I remember seeing Jeff Tweedy in a cubicle, you know, <laughs> as big as Sean John had become. Yes. At one point, it's a $400 million company or something. This man started in a cubicle. Absolutely. So for anybody who is, you know, have these lofty dreams, you have to start somewhere. Yes. And um, more times than not, it's going to be from humble beginnings. Absolutely. And I'll say something else because a lot of people don't understand this. Um, most of the businesses we launched took about two years to plan and develop. Um, and people don't really understand that. I mean, there are, uh, there, are, uh, there are approaches to business that I think are short-term oriented, which is just that I'm going to be reactionary. Anything that comes on my desk, I'm just going to do it, get a quick check, and then it may or may not last. Everything uh, Sean did with Bad Boy and Combs Enterprises was really built to last for a long time. Like I remember even just recently, you know, celebrating 10 years, 20 years, he's always like, why are we celebrating that? That's not a long time. Like I want to celebrate 100 years, mm -hmm. 50 years, 100 years. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.